a game that thrives in pain and suffering, Bloodborne has established itself as a game in a class of its own. And when we say pain and suffering, we are not only talking about the characters who are unfortunate enough to share the same setting as the distorted, nightmare-inducing evils that plague an accursed town, but also the players who are willing to endure challenge after challenge after callous-causing challenge to prove themselves that they are good at what they do. Well, Bloodborne surpassed the success of the Souls franchise for its depth and difficulty. Welcome to the Raymaru Files, and this is the review for Bloodborne on the PlayStation 4. You assume the role of a hunter who suddenly ends up in the town of Yarnum, a dark and mysterious town that was suddenly engulfed with a bizarre epidemic that causes its inhabitants to become deranged monsters with the intention to kill. It is up to you to navigate through various streets, forests, and places unknown, all in search of answers as well as a means of survival. For a game that was aptly developed by From Software who put the Souls franchise on the map, it is no surprise that Bloodborne is evident with elements from its landmark predecessors. While the combat system encourages fast and swift gameplay, it is also a game that trains you to be careful with your actions lest you will see the you died screen more often than the gameplay, causing you to lose blood echoes earned, which is your currency in the game, used to buy everything, from powerful equipment to stat enhancements. In fact, the first thing the game teaches you is how easy it is to die. Evading will become your best friend in the whole game. The game allows you to choose which place to go next, as it's more like a labyrinth than an adventure on rails. This game makes exploration more rewarding and fun since you may end up finding better paths, entirely new dungeons, or even bosses to conquer rather than just a search for loot. You also have full control of how you want to develop your character given you can afford it. Once you learn the enemy patterns and actions though, going through the game becomes more comfortable than you would expect, despite the soul's reputation. And to emphasize on the importance of strategy, risk and reward, your attacks may help restore your health after you're damaged, thanks to the regain system. The Hunter's Dream, your base of operations, is your safe haven as well as where you will find NPCs for quests and upgrades. Talking to survivors and doing their quests may yield great rewards, making the game a bit easier for you. However, if you're feeling cheeky about how the game's getting too easy for you, there are the Chalice Dungeons where you will go through different floors facing different bosses. While much harder, it pays you back in terms of items collected and blood echoes earned. Simply put, the gameplay experience is greatly dictated by your own choices and actions. So if you keep on dying, that's on you. Bloodborne's online structure deserves much praise. Going into online mode, you can interact with fellow hunters through various means. For one, you can leave notes that can clue people in. You experience an ambush, leave your note about it. Tell them about that ambush. Or leave a message saying that there's treasure waiting nearby instead. Up to you. Also, at the cost of insight, you can summon help against a certain boss you can't seem to overcome. While you can always have the option of beating it by yourself, it also helps to have some friends along. At the cost of your pride. The gameplay can only be supplemented by how the environment looks and feels in the game. Bloodborne will consistently remind you of where you are through the amazing details of its setting and creatures. Monsters are designed so intricately, calling them merely scary may very well be an understatement. And with these monsters living in a place of dread that was so masterfully portrayed in the game, the theme of fear will always be around, ahead, and behind you. Previously, this game was going to receive a lower score due to prevailing issue on loading times to the point where it takes a terribly long time to load between deaths and scene transitions. However, a recent patch has finally resolved this problem, which lessened load time significantly among other improvements. With this considering how wonderful the game was made, as well as an engrossing gameplay and perfectly constructed story, don't be surprised if the discussion for the 2015 Game of the Year will include Bloodborne, no doubt about it. Bloodborne for the PlayStation 4, scores a 5 out of 5. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more of our awesome videos, be sure to check out and subscribe to our Raymaru Files channel. And you can also visit our official website for more gaming goodies. If you want to learn more about the voice behind our game reviews, yours truly, you can click on the second video to visit Lentropy's official channel. We'll see you next time.